We're sitting here north of the largest inland port of entry for food in the world and the third largest port of entry for fresh produce in the United States that comes up from thousands of miles south of us along the west coast of Mexico, like a big food superhighway. There are billions of pounds that come from Noales Sonora via thousands of semi-tractor trailers coming across at the border. 25 to 30 percent of all the produce that we eat year round comes through the border towns. With that is a tremendous amount of food waste because if the Florida tomato prices drop on a certain day, 120,000 pounds might be thrown into a landfill just because of the pricing. At each point that that food is exchanging hands, it's trimmed, the spoiled food or close to spoiling food is taken off the truck. Part of it goes into food banks, part of it goes for livestock feed, but thousands upon thousands of pounds is still thrown in landfills. I break down a lot of times just thinking about that. And I, I've gone to the landfills and seen all that food when there's so many people out there that can use it. This is one of the most diverse, biologically and culturally diverse regions in North America, and yet it has the highest rates of unemployment and childhood food insecurity. And if we can't use that biodiversity to make life better for the very people who live here, something's wrong. The whole notion of how food relief fits into our overall food system to take care of the most marginalized, the people most disadvantaged by how our current food system works is rapidly changing. And what we do here at Borderlands is we rescue produce for its redistribution. And we rescue between 30 and 40 million pounds of produce per produce season. Santa Cruz County, for one, has a very, very high rate of diabetes. Feeding people nutritiously, it, that is extremely important, and, and vegetables are expensive. Currently, the local market in this area is very limited to the items that it carries. People are forced to pay the high prices because they can't necessarily travel to the grocery store. They don't have the means of getting there, or the, you know, they're, they're financially unstable. Thank you very much. Have a good day. We'll see you next time. All right. The great blessings that we've had with working with Borderland Food Bank is saying, hey, you know what, let's reach out to the people. Let's not throw this food away. Please tell your families, friends, neighbors, anyone that you know. The earliest chroniclers of Southwestern agriculture were about 1540, and they saw this incredibly diverse agriculture. It was a very, very healthy diet that protected people from the kinds of diseases that now afflict many. By the time many of us were born, we had just a small fraction of the kinds of diversity. The Southwest and Arizona in particular have seen very rapid climate change. Climate scientists have reported that temperatures in the Southwestern US have increased at double the global average. In dealing with climate uncertainty, we need bet hedging strategies. And the best bet hedging strategy is the most famous one. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Native Seed Search was begun with three of my friends and very few dollars. The purpose and mission of Native Seed Search is to conserve the rich agricultural heritage of the greater Southwest region. We work to keep that diversity alive and available to farmers and gardeners who can use it to enhance the local food systems. Once these seeds enter our seed bank collection, then we have taken on responsibility for maintaining them forever. We're really at a critical time in the history of American agriculture, not just because of the loss of seeds, but the loss of the traditional knowledge associated with how to best use those seeds. I really believe that you can grow food here. I think it's an educational effort that has to happen. I think the stigma of what a farmer is, is absolutely wrong. To teach people to grow food locally in their backyard gardens, how it used to be, 
everyone used to have a garden or a community gardens. Or it engages people to take care of one another. We're finding solutions emerging from some of the most devastated landscapes in North America. To rebuild a food system from the bottom up in a participatory way is the same kind of thing that we're doing in small rural communities in the borderlands. I had a vision and my passion is helping people. And my, my vision was to start a garden where the community can come in and pick their own vegetables, fruit. To me, that's one of the most satisfying things since I started, that the people here in the community are getting fed. Before I became a mom, I had no idea about gardening. And it wasn't until I had the heart problem and became a mom that I went, wait a minute, do I want to teach my daughter this? And that's really what inspires me in the garden is I get to spend time with my daughter. I get to teach her about harvesting her way to better health, you know, eating fresh foods. I want her to see that there is a positive transformation and that people can make uh, positive things happen and there is a healthy lifestyle um, and, and how to be, you know, a healthy and strong citizen and, and put back in their community. And I think that's important for her and for, for anyone. Food is a sacrament. Food is what binds us together. It's sacred and it behooves all of us, whether it's for health reasons or because we care about the land or because our faith requires us to care about the people most marginalized by a broken food system, to heal that food system. And that's the only way we're going to heal our economies, our bodies and the land.